How's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with our Talk of the Hawks series here on the Hawking Regime channel. This is going to be a post-game analysis of the Seattle Seahawks versus Carolina Panthers 27-23 home loss in week 6 of the NFL season. Man, I'm just pissed off at this point. I Usually the way I like to go through these Talk of the Hawk videos, though, is to go by the positives of the game, the negatives, the MVP and the takeaways. This is all from the perspective of the Seattle Seahawks, by the way. So uh, uh, you won't expect any talk of the individual Carolina Panthers as much as the Seahawks uh, at all. So starting off with the positives of the game, I'm gonna have to go with you know seeing Marshawn Lynch back when he got blocks, he was extremely effective. I mean, we know how ridiculous Marshawn can be in the open field. He was a monster, no different today. Although when the blocks were bad, you know, bad things happen. Uh, didn't fum didn't fumble the ball at all, but uh, was negative. There were a couple negative runs, and Jimmy Graham, absolute monster. Eight receptions or 140 yards was absolute beast on the field today. Great part of our pass game, as you see, no one came even close to really having an impact aside from Ricardo Lockett. So yeah, those 140 yard, 40, uh, receiving yards was very impressive. Uh, you know, beneficial parts of the defense is the fact that we were able to get two interceptions today, and uh, Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor both were parts of that. Um, as you can see right there, two interceptions on their part, no big return. So that probably concludes the positive of the game. Good early on defense um, in the first half. Uh, and now moving on to the negatives. Um, this is kind of an honest plea to the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, uh, I don't even. There's not even a, a way for me to even communicate with the Seattle Seahawks in reality. But um, if I could, I would say please cut Kerry Williams or replace him with another cornerback because I can't even count how many times uh, Greg Olson was destroying him again, torching him. Look at this: seven receptions for 131 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the last play of the game was not on Kerry Williams, but there were so many first down conversions uh, on uh, on the on the behalf of Kerry Williams on defense guarding Greg Olson and Devin Funches and these guys. And he, you know he let Ted Ginn Jr. beat him at one time. That could have been a touchdown if the ball wasn't tipped up in the air for an interception for the Seahawks. But please, I really. I really want to see how Seattle does without Kerry Williams on the field because he is absolutely destroying a lot of the defensive side, a lot of the defensive side of the football for the Seattle Seahawks, especially in the secondary. It was just horrendous. It was garbage. I, I can't even believe how poor a cornerback can play in the game. I mean, he's not fast. He plays off the receivers, and um, it's just really, really ugly to watch. Um, uh, you know, obviously, negatives also are uh, combined with the fact that the fourth quarter woes continue for Seattle. 13-3, to uh, outscored by 10 points in the fourth quarter. I believe the deficit was like 69-27 to over the past like four games the Seattle Seahawks have played or something like that. It's been bad. It's been really, really bad. Uh, I don't know what the real solution is, but I know that starting cutting Kerry Williams or you know, putting another cornerback in his spot is a huge key to that. Also, the miscommunication is just ridiculous like how can you let Greg Olson if you watch the last play when I mean, Greg Olson was there wasn't anybody within 15 yards of the guy I mean he was wide open in the end zone for a touchdown to win the game uh the miscommunication errors on the two Tyler Eifert touchdowns last week as well you just have to wonder what the hell is going on you know like is is there really that poor communication between guys like Cam Chancellor Earl Thomas Richard Sherman you would think that it wouldn't be that bad but something is uh, something is not right uh, in Seattle at this point you know, definitely, it's hard to come back from games like this, man, where you're just like, okay, we're up 20-7, to 7, or the crowd's into the game, we're winning the game, and then, uh, you know, again, again um, they outscore us, um, what was it, 17-3, to 3, uh, over the next, you know, uh, three or thir uh, next two quarters in the third and fourth, so, uh, just... Another really, really bad loss for Seattle. I thought before, when I said in the pregame analysis, this was a must-win game for Seattle, in my opinion. This was. I felt like this was a must-win game for Seattle, and they didn't win the game. So I think it's a long road back to actually attaining success in the NFL for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, they need to win two games go, to go back to 500. And I, I don't even know what their records look I don't even know what uh, their schedule is looking at at this point, to be honest. Uh, we'll go check that out right, as of right now just to see. Um, but again, just really horrendous. Um, so two, two away games at San Francisco, at Dallas. Dallas uh, has a solid defense um, like the Panthers did. Uh, and they're having a little bit of struggles at offense to get opponent. in San Francisco, you know, I think they won today for the first time in a bit after having a bit of a losing streak. So they're on track. Arizona, we know how good they can be. 
Uh, again, that's a home game. Sunday Night Football, San Francisco again. And then Pittsburgh, some tough opponents. Not going to get a lot easier, but um, we need to find a way to win games if we're going to be able to, be, to bounce back into playoff contention. Uh, there's just no way in hell that we're going to be able to go on without like this. This is not going to be uh, good. Uh, you know, probably the, I'm going to go into the MVP of the game. I've ranted kind of long enough on the negatives, but the MVP, got to give it to Jimmy Graham. Um, uh, eight receptions for 140 yards is absolutely uh, incredible for the Seattle Seahawks in terms of receiving the ball. Not ever known for having that uh, type of ability in terms of you know pass catching. So definitely impressed with that. Uh, takeaways from the game. If we don't sure up communication on the defensive side of the football late in the game, and pressure is another thing that I think people aren't really paying attention to. Cam Newton had so much goddamn time in the pocket. I mean, it was insane. I mean, I couldn't even believe how much time he had back there to just torch the defense. And then, obviously, when you have a guy like Kerry Williams going up against, I mean, Carolina Panthers receivers. I'm not disrespecting the Carolina Panthers receivers right now, but, I mean, they're not the greatest in the league, and they're still torching Kerry Williams. I mean, you can give a little bit of, you can cut a little slack for him last week when he's going up against A.J. Green, but this week, I mean, guys like Ted Ginn, who aren't really known to be, you know, great route runners, and Devin Funches is a rookie, Ed Dixon. I mean, Greg Olson's a great player, but, I mean, it is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, we really, I can't believe Seattle hasn't keyed in more to the fact that Kerry Williams is a huge, huge weak spot in the Seattle Seahawks defense, especially in the secondary, which is where the big plays ended up going. And late in the game, the Panthers weren't going to be able to run the football all the way down the field. They had to get big chunks of yards pass, passing the ball. On the last play of the game, I don't even know what the hell happened. I mean, there was horrible miscommunication. Greg Wilson just glided up the seams. That should not happen to a team like the Seattle Seahawks horrendous performance in the second half i mean third quarter we played okay fourth quarter again just absolutely getting destroyed i can't even i i don't even want to look at the numbers for the fourth quarter for seahawks this year it's it'll be garbage but you know hopefully there's a way we can bounce back from this you know seattle i know Pete carroll is an unusual head coach so if anybody can do it i think the seattle seahawks can uh bounce back from this but it's going to be a long long road back to victory for the seattle seahawks if nothing else hopefully more bandwagon riders will jump off um, but again, still people don't like Seattle. No one really loves Seattle. Uh, I still love Seattle, man. I love Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to maintain my, I'm never going to leave this team and I love Seattle Seahawks. I've gone to the Super Bowl the past two years. Absolutely. Uh, I love the team. Love the defense. Marshawn Lynch is a running back. It's a monster. Jimmy Graham's been playing excellent. Defense usually is really good, man, but you know, we're losing games and it's extremely frustrating as a fan to see our team lose these last two games and you know, arguably, we should be on a three-game losing streak after the Detroit mishap uh, of the referees. Uh, but it is actually going to be the conclusion of this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more Madden NFL 16 content. As well as these videos, man. These Talk with the Hawk videos. I like to talk about my favorite team in the NFL, the Seattle Seahawks. Die-hard Seahawk fan. And, uh, yep, this season will definitely test my uh, loyalty to this team for sure. <laughs> as we continue to not have success in the NFL. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and yep, thanks for watching.